14. Tourist Might Never Walk Again In July 2019, a tragic water park accident in Benidorm, Spain, left 23-year-old British tourist David Brifaut facing the possibility of paralysis from the chest down. David was on holiday with his girlfriend at the Aqualandia water park when the incident occurred. It happened on the splash slide. The accident resulted in the young man breaking two vertebrae in his neck and suffering a severe spinal cord injury. He was rushed to intensive care at a hospital in Alicante, where David was attended to by his mother, Lorraine. A spokesperson for Aqualandia denied any safety concerns regarding the slide, asserting that David had failed to adhere to the park's guidelines. The spokesperson stated that video footage demonstrated David's non-compliance and emphasized the park's commitment to safety, with rules prominently displayed throughout the premises. The Brifo family, hailing from Essex, has shared video footage capturing the moments leading up to the accident. Lorraine expressed the family's devastation, describing the situation as every parent's nightmare. David's prognosis indicates potential paralysis and the family is hopeful for his recovery while facing the harsh reality that he might never walk again. While acknowledging the excellent care David received, the family was eager to bring him home. A crowdfunding page was set up on Just Giving, aiming to raise 75,000 pounds to support David's care and treatment upon his return. The funds were likely crucial for covering lifelong care expenses, including necessary home modifications for disability access, specialized treatments, and unforeseen costs associated with his rehabilitation. As of the latest update, the crowdfunding initiative garnered significant support, amassing 35,000 pounds. The campaign stresses the life-altering impact of David's injuries highlighting the need for financial assistance to ensure that he receives the best possible care. The Brifo family remains focused on doing everything within their capabilities to raise funds that will contribute to David's recovery and enhance his quality of life. 13. Verukt In 2016, a shocking incident took place at Schlitterbahn Water Park in Kansas City, Kansas, involving the world's tallest waterslide, Verukt. Standing at an imposing 169 feet, 51.5 meters, the slide offered an exhilarating 17-story plunge, reaching speeds of up to 70 miles per hour, 113 kilometers per hour, attracting thrill-seekers from around the world. Tragically, though, on August 7, 2016, 10-year-old Caleb Schwab lost his life when the raft he was on went airborne, colliding with a metal pole supporting a safety net, resulting in his instantaneous decapitation. Filmmaker Nathan Truesdell, prompted by the devastating news, delved into the intricate details of the incident, leading to his chilling documentary, The Water Slide which explores themes of gross negligence, lax regulations, and the consequences of willful ignorance. The film reveals that Verup's construction in 2012 was fast-tracked by Schlitterbahn co-owner Jeff Henry and senior designer John Schooley, aiming to coincide with a reality TV show appearance and secure a Guinness World Record. Shockingly, neither Henry nor Schooley had a background in mechanical engineering, and unlike neighboring Missouri, Kansas water parks didn't require inspections by a state agency. Caleb Schwab's father, a Kansas state representative, was coincidentally at the park on elected official day when the tragic incident occurred. Trustel's documentary unveils the lack of scientific rigor in the ride's testing and design, relying on crude trial and error methods. The netting, intended to prevent rafts from flying off the slide, ended up causing the fatal accident. Henry and Schooley faced serious charges in the wake of the tragedy. Henry even faced a second-degree murder charge. 
The state alleged that the duo had rushed the ride's construction, skipped essential design steps, and relied on unsafe testing methods. Court documents revealed a history of incidents, with evidence of other rafts going airborne and colliding with the netting before Caleb's fatality. An engineering report that was issued a week before the ride's grand opening even warned of the potential for severe injuries or fatalities. But shockingly, the water park allegedly downplayed or buried reports of injuries on the ride. In a surprising turn, the charges against Henry and Schooley were dismissed in February 2017, leading to the closure of the water park and the subsequent demolition of the ill-fated Verrucht slide. Truesdale's documentary exposes the darker side of the amusement park industry revealing the tragic consequences of neglect and inadequate safety measures. 12. Suing Disney Emma McGuinness filed a lawsuit against Walt Disney Parks and Resorts in October 2019, alleging severe gynecological injuries sustained on a water slide at Florida's Disney World. McGuinness, celebrating her 30th birthday with her family, experienced the incident on the Typhoon Lagoon Water Park's fastest and tallest slide. Humunga Kawabunga, a 214-foot or 65-meter descent. The lawsuit claims that after descending the slide, McGuinness was brought to an abrupt stop by the standing water at the ride's bottom, causing her swimsuit to painfully jam into a wedgie. The immediate and severe pain internally led to blood rushing from between her legs, resulting in hospitalization. McGinnis suffered damage to internal organs and a full thickness laceration, causing her bowel to protrude through her abdominal wall. The legal action filed in Orange County, Florida alleges negligence on Disney's part for failing to adequately warn riders of the injury risk and not providing protective clothing, such as shorts. The lawsuit seeks damages of at least $50,000, but Disney World hasn't responded to requests for comment. The Humunga Kawabunga water slide, where riders reach speeds of up to 40 miles per hour, 64 kilometers per hour, without using a raft or tube, features a steep 60-degree angle descent down Mount Mayday. The park's safety policies prohibit guests from wearing shoes, flotation devices, goggles, or swim masks on the ride. Riders are instructed to cross their ankles before sliding to reduce the risk of injury. However, the lawsuit claims that guests aren't adequately informed about the potential injury risk associated with the ride. According to the suit, McGinnis initially followed the recommended position but became airborne during the slide, increasing the likelihood of her legs becoming uncrossed. The impact into the standing water at the slide's base caused her swimsuit to be painfully forced between her legs, leading to the violent entry of water. The lawsuit highlights the risk of a wedgie event being more common and serious for women due to their anatomy. As of now, McGuinness's lawyers haven't provided comments on the case. 11. Heartache In February 2019, a tragic incident occurred at Zender's Splash Village in Michigan. Ten-year-old London Eisenbase lost her life on the park's largest water slide, the 272-foot, 83-meter Super Loop Speed Slide. London, an excited and healthy gymnast, was visiting the park with her family. But the harmless family outing turned into a nightmare when London's excitement triggered an abnormal heartbeat, resulting in cardiac arrest. Apparently, she suffered from a potentially fatal condition without even knowing it, a condition known as Long QT Syndrome. London's mother, Tina, shared the heart-wrenching details of the incident to raise awareness about hidden heart conditions and the importance of defibrillators, which could potentially have saved her daughter's life. The tragedy unfolded as London, having waited two years to go on the slide, excitedly gave two thumbs up before descending. The unique design of the slide, featuring a small pink capsule, added to the thrill. As London shot through the tube, the excitement led to an abnormal heart rhythm, 
causing her to go into cardiac arrest. Despite efforts to save her life, including hospitalization and life support, London succumbed to severe brain damage due to a lack of oxygen. Sadly, she passed away on February 27, 2019, and was laid to rest on March 3rd, wearing the dress she'd picked out for her school's daddy-daughter dance. Tina, devastated by the loss, has since become an instructor for the American Heart Association and, along with her husband Jerry, established the nonprofit London Strong Foundation. The foundation aims to raise awareness about hidden heart conditions and provides defibrillators to the local community. Tina emphasizes the need for a proper response in emergencies and encourages people not to fear using defibrillators, as they're crucial in restoring a regular heartbeat. In tribute to London's love for animals, the foundation also donates to pet rescues. London's family, living through an ongoing nightmare, hopes to raise awareness about the unpredictability of such conditions and urges others to cherish every moment with their families. 10. Deadly Plunge in June of 1997, a horrifying accident occurred at Waterworld USA, an amusement park in Concord, California, when a towering waterslide known as the Bonsai Pipeline collapsed. The slide, standing at about 30 feet or 9 meters tall, was overloaded with teenagers on a graduation outing from Napa High School resulting in the death of one girl and injuries to 32 others. Eyewitnesses reported that, against the lifeguard's orders, dozens of teenagers crowded onto the slide simultaneously, attempting to surpass a senior class record for the maximum number of people on a water slide at one time. The chaotic scene led to the lifeguard blowing her whistle and shouting at the youths to stop. But unfortunately, they didn't listen. Before security could intervene, the slide collapsed, sending the students plummeting about 30 feet or 9 meters to the ground. The tragedy occurred at around 3.30 p.m., accompanied by a loud crash as the slide cracked. The victims, primarily seniors from Napa High School, suffered head and chest wounds with one 17-year-old girl succumbing to her injuries at Mount Diablo Medical Center in Concord. Witnesses described a horrifying scene of students falling from the structure, with screams and cries echoing through the park. Premier Parks, Inc., the owner of Waterworld, expressed sympathy for the victims and emphasized safety as its top priority in a prepared statement. The company asserted that, based on the information available at the time, they believed that the slide was safe. However, bystanders revealed that the slide had been loaded with more people than its capacity, and park officials acknowledged that the trouble began when a group of youths ignored the lifeguard's instructions. Emergency crews rushed to the scene, evacuating the injured to nine different hospitals in the area by helicopter and ambulance. Several students were in serious or critical condition, and the spilled water from the collapsed slide turned red with their blood. The park, which had been relatively trouble-free since its opening in 1995, was closed as a result. The tragic incident prompted an independent inspection of the slide by Concord officials. Witnesses and survivors recounted the chaos, with some mentioning a practice called clogging, where multiple people attempted to ride the slide together. The Napa High School seniors, initially instructed to board school buses for their trip home, had rushed toward the bonsai slide for one last ride, contributing to the tragic outcome. The aftermath left the victims' families devastated, with the Napa High principal expressing sorrow over the loss of a vibrant student. The Concord Park was shut down indefinitely, marking a somber chapter in its history. 9. Chinese Theme Park Disaster In a harrowing incident on a water slide in Tonglu, Zhejiang Province, China, captured on video in October 2023, Chaos ensued as boats collided and capsized, leaving passengers in distress. The footage revealed a horrifying sequence of events, starting with a woman and a small child being knocked out of their boat, 
prompting screams of panic. As an oncoming boat collided with the stranded pair, they were pushed further down the slide. And despite attempting to cling on to the boat behind them, the woman and the child found themselves at the mercy of the water slide's force. The slide, elevated several meters above the ground and surrounded by treetops, offered little protection with short rails on either side. Groups of passengers in yellow boats wearing plastic ponchos trailed the distressed pair, while the woman's terrified screams echoed throughout the water slide. Another woman emerged, standing up and attempting to shuffle down the passage to safety. But desperation filled the air as she clung to a large pole, narrowly avoiding falling over the 12-foot-high, 4-meter ride. Below, passerby attempted to assist, with one person running towards the slide's start to alert staff. Another man climbed a nearby pole in an effort to provide aid. However, the woman, despite preventing herself from falling initially, was eventually swept away by a powerful thrust of water, causing her legs to give way. Two boats followed, colliding with the woman before she was carried down the slide. Remarkably though, reports claim that the woman was saved at the next turn. Meanwhile, the child, who'd been forced out of the boat earlier, sustained several injuries, including bleeding from the head. But despite the injuries, the child was reported to be in stable condition. The incident shed light on the dangers and lack of safety measures on the water slide, prompting concerns about the well-being of passengers and the need for improved safety protocols in water parks. 8. Total Wipeout In a startling incident that unfolded at an unidentified water park in Mexico in July of 2017, a video surfaced capturing a distressing moment for two girls on a water slide. The footage reveals the girls struggling helplessly on the slide before a high-speed slider crashes into them, turning what should have been a summer highlight into a frightening experience. In the short clip, the two girls find themselves stuck on the water slide, attempting to inch their way down. And as they cautiously progress, the girl at the back glances behind her, growing increasingly concerned. Both girls then turn to look backward, just as the camera zooms out to expose a woman hurtling down the slide at an alarming speed. Panic ensues as they scream and try to hasten their descent, but the approaching woman is moving too swiftly. The inevitable collision occurs, sending all three women airborne. The video concludes with the trio scrambling across the slide, grappling with the aftermath of the collision as they continue their descent. But the specific location of the water park in Mexico remains unknown. The video serves as a stark reminder that even recreational activities designed for enjoyment can pose risks stressing the need for proper supervision, adherence to safety measures, and thorough inspections to ensure the well-being of park visitors. 7. Falling at Knott's Berry Farm In a horrific incident that took place at Knott's Berry Farm in Buena Park, California in September 2001, a woman lost her life after falling from the perilous plunge ride. The victim, identified as 40-year-old Lori Mason Larez from Duarte, suffered extensive injuries despite her seatbelt and lap bar being securely fastened. The perilous plunge was a combination roller coaster and water slide featuring a 115-foot, 35-meter drop into a 650,000-gallon, 2.5-million-liter pool. Mason Lares fell from an unknown height during the Friday night incident. Susan Tierney, a spokeswoman for the park, confirmed that the victim's seatbelt and lap bar were in their correct and locked positions when the tragedy occurred. The ride was promptly closed as a result, and an investigation was initiated by both state and park officials. Bruce Lyle, supervising deputy of the Orange County Coroner's Office, stated that Mason Lares succumbed to extensive traumatic injuries sustained during the fall. However, specific details regarding the cause of these injuries weren't disclosed. Paramedics treated Mason Lares at the scene before transporting her to West Anaheim Medical Center, where she was pronounced dead. 
The perilous plunge remained closed as authorities probed the circumstances surrounding the incident. This tragedy marked the second death at Knott's Berry Farm that month, and the fourth involving a California amusement park during the summer. The last recorded guest fatality at Knott's Berry Farm before 2001 occurred in 1983, with an employee fatality in 1996. Al Tafazzoli, the manager of the Southern California Amusement Ride Office within the State Department of Occupational Health and Safety, failed to immediately provide comments on the incident. Earlier that month, 20-year-old Justine Dedeal Bolia passed away from a brain aneurysm after losing consciousness on Knott's Montezuma's Revenge roller coaster. State officials explained that there was no evidence linking the ride to Bolia's death, and the coaster had since reopened, pending final autopsy results. The tragic incident emphasized the ongoing need for rigorous safety measures and investigations in the amusement park industry to ensure that another accident like this one would never happen again. 6. Defective in-ground water slide In May 2010, the U.S. Consumer Product Safety Commission CPSC, issued a recall for 21,000 inflatable bonsai in-ground pool water slides after investigating the death of a 29-year-old woman and severe injuries to two other consumers. Walmart Stores Inc. and Toys R Us Inc. agreed to provide full refunds for the slides returned to them. The CPSC found that the bonsai slides were defective and could suddenly deflate, causing users to crash to the ground. The investigation also revealed that the slides were unstable and could topple over in both still and windy conditions. The focus of the investigation was the tragic death of Robin Aleo, a 29-year-old Colorado mom who'd been visiting relatives in Andover, Massachusetts. During a pool party on July 29, 2006, Aleo climbed to the top of the six-foot-high, two-meter Bonsai Falls slide and slid down head first. Then, as she neared the bottom, the slide deflated, causing her to strike her head on the pool's edge. Aleo suffered a broken neck and paralysis, and she was unable to breathe. She passed away the following day at a Boston hospital, and in the wake of her death, Aleo's family sued Toys R Us, resulting in a $20.6 million verdict after a short deliberation by the jury. The CPSC also noted two other cases related to the bonsai slides, including a 24-year-old man from Springfield, Missouri, who became a quadriplegic, and a woman from Allentown, Pennsylvania, who suffered a neck fracture due to slide deflations. The recalled bonsai in-ground pool water slides featured a vinyl structure with a blue base, a yellow sliding mat, and an arch over the top for connecting a hose to spray water on the slide's downward slope. The words bonsai splash were printed in a circular blue, orange, and white logo resembling a wave on both sides of the slide. Manufactured in China by Manly Toys Limited, the slides were sold at Walmart and Toys R Us from January 2005 through June 2009, priced at around $250. They were identifiable by the barcode number 267-531-5734 and model number 15734, which appeared on the original package but not on the slides themselves. The recall aimed to address the serious safety issues associated with these inflatable water slides and prevent further injuries or fatalities. 5. Slide Snaps in Half In May 2022, a horrifying incident unfolded at Indonesia's Kenjeron Park when a massive water slide snapped in half, causing those trapped inside to plummet 30 feet or 9 meters to the ground. The terrifying event was captured on camera, and the footage quickly went viral on social media. The incident occurred on May 7th, and the video shows a segment of a spiraling, enclosed tube slide collapsing, leading to screams from onlookers as swimmers fell to the concrete floor. Out of the 16 people trapped inside the slide, eight were taken to a nearby hospital, and three of them suffered broken bones. The water park, situated in Surabaya City, 
attributed the accident to the wear and tear of the ride over time, acknowledging that it had become weakened. Authorities also admitted that the slide was overloaded with people when the incident transpired. And to make matters even worse, the most recent maintenance check had occurred more than nine months before the accident. In response to the incident, Surabaya City's deputy mayor, Armuji, called for an immediate inspection of other amusement parks in the region to prevent similar accidents in the future. He emphasized the importance of amusement park owners taking responsibility and implementing necessary safety measures to protect visitors. Mayor Eri Kayati assured that trauma healing assistance would be provided to all victims by the Surabaya City government until their full recovery. Additionally, Kayati held the park's management accountable for the accident and declared that they'd be responsible for covering all medical expenses until the victims fully recovered. He called for further clarification from the park's management and initiated a police investigation to determine the cause of the slide's collapse. 4. Teacher Paralyzed In a life-altering incident that occurred in 2020 in Richmond Hill, Georgia, Middle school teacher Valerie Fesk became paralyzed from the chest down after a water slide accident during a Memorial Day celebration. Fesk, a wife and mother of two, recently returned home after five months of rehabilitation in Atlanta. The accident occurred on an inflatable water slide when someone collided with Fesk, hitting her in the back of the neck and submerging her underwater. Unable to remove her legs, she called for help. EMS workers quickly responded, transporting her to Memorial Health and later to Atlanta's Shepherd Center for spinal cord and brain injury rehabilitation. Fesk spent five months relearning basic activities like brushing her teeth, feeding herself, and sitting up. The emotional toll was intensified by COVID-19 restrictions, limiting her husband's presence. Fesk faced the loss of independence and the challenge of basic tasks as a result of the accident. Despite the hardships, Fesk has made remarkable progress, regaining muscle strength and feeling in her legs, stomach, and torso. She can now move her right thumb and perform tasks she couldn't manage initially. However, the uncertainty of walking again remains, as spinal cord injuries vary in recovery. Fesk takes her progress one day at a time, emphasizing her desire to regain functionality in her fingers and torso. While walking is a distant goal, she appreciates the little milestones. Back home, she continues therapy with specialists visiting two to three times a week. Community support has been overwhelming, with Governor Brian Kemp expressing well wishes and a Facebook page chronicling her journey, gaining over 6,500 likes. Thankfully, donations to the Val's Village Fund, covered essential equipment costs, and the nonprofit community service organization, AMBUCS, provided her with a hand bike, enhancing her mobility. Fesk's focus is on strengthening herself, returning to teaching, and restoring normalcy for her family. Despite the challenges, she remains positive, inspired by the love and support of her husband, Brent. Looking ahead, her goals include resuming work and providing for her family, demonstrating resilience and determination in the face of adversity. 3. High Speed Slide In August 2012, a German water park, Galaxy Ruchen Paradise, made headlines by banning women from its high-speed slide, the Extreme Phaser, citing concerns about intimate injuries. Marcus Mayer, the park's manager, stated that the decision was prompted by six complaints from women who reported injuries to the genital area after using the slide the previous year. Allegedly, the rushing water caused harm as they descended at speeds of up to 45 miles per hour, 72 kilometers per hour, leading some to require hospitalization. Surprisingly, though, no men had reported similar injuries. Mayer argued that the injuries were attributed to the nature of the female anatomy. The Professional Association of Gynecologists, however, expressed skepticism, asserting that there was no medical reason for women, except those who were pregnant, to be banned from such a slide. The association's spokeswoman mentioned never having heard of water slide-related genital injuries, 
Despite the controversial men-only policy, the park claimed that few women had complained. Emphasizing the intention wasn't to discriminate, the mayor mentioned that reworking the slide wasn't a serious consideration, highlighting its novelty and estimated construction cost of up to 100,000 euros. Responding to the situation, the park began developing a protective suit for women to use on the slide, drawing a parallel to the gear worn in ice hockey. This initiative aimed to address safety concerns while allowing female enthusiasts to enjoy the slide. The manager indicated that the park's approach was an attempt to strike a balance between safety considerations and inclusivity. The decision to impose a gender-specific restriction on the water slide sparked discussions about discrimination and the need for a more inclusive approach to recreational activities. The controversy surrounding the ban prompted the park to explore alternative solutions, signaling a willingness to accommodate women's participation in the high-speed slide experience. 2. Stuck in the Dominican Republic in a tragic incident in the Dominican Republic in 2023, a Toronto woman, Karina McCoy, found herself paralyzed and stranded after a severe water slide accident. While on vacation with her 20-year-old son at a water park on Christmas Day, McCoy's tube on the water slide was forcefully struck from behind, resulting in a catastrophic injury. McCoy suffered a broken neck and a bulging spinal disc rendering her paralyzed from the chest down. And after undergoing emergency surgery at a local hospital in La Romana, her travel insurance claim was accepted. Arrangements were then made for an air ambulance to transport her back to St. Joseph's Health Center in Toronto. However, despite the acceptance of the repatriation request, McCoy faced a significant hurdle. She hadn't been assigned a doctor back in Toronto. St. Joseph's Health Center indicated its willingness to accept her as a patient, but the lack of a designated doctor delayed the repatriation process. Unity Health Toronto's senior communications advisor, Jennifer Stranges, explained the standard procedures for out-of-country medical emergencies, emphasizing the thorough review of the patient's medical records before accepting repatriation. Responsibility for finding a hospital bed and arranging transportation falls on the insurance company, in this case, Orion Travel Insurance, a part of the Canadian Automobile Association, CAA. CAA communications manager Nadia Matos outlined the process, indicating that the insurance company initiates a bed find request, checking daily with hospitals in the patient's catchment area and expanding the search if needed. McCoy's case highlighted the complexities in the allocation of hospital beds, leading to delays. The nature of her injuries required complex continuing care, and only once an attending physician accepted her and an available bed was secured, could the repatriation process commence. As a consequence of the delays, McCoy expressed concerns about potential long-term consequences, especially regarding rehabilitation. Since December 26th of that year, she received only 60 minutes of rehab, a stark contrast to the 20 to 30 hours she might have received if at home. Language also presented a barrier to communicating with healthcare professionals in the Dominican Republic, where McCoy had to rely on Google Translate. Unfortunately, her request for a human translator from the Canadian consulate was reportedly denied. In an update, CAA later reported that a bed for McCoy had been secured, and she was scheduled to return home. Throughout the ordeal, McCoy emphasized the lack of urgency in the Canadian healthcare system, expressing gratitude for the care received, but highlighting the need for a more streamlined and efficient process in such critical situations. And now for number one. But if you want to hear even more stories, stay tuned for some extra content that you might have missed. One. My leg! In March 2014, De Jarvis, a 46-year-old father of two, suffered a horrifying accident on a water slide at Didim Beach Resort in Altincum, Turkey. Hurtling down the slide, he was forcefully thrown into a swimming pool wall, breaking his leg in six places. De underwent five major operations to address a bone infection and had his leg broken in three more places resulting in a leg two inches or five centimeters shorter than the other. 
and despite the severity of his injuries, Day claimed that he hadn't received compensation from First Choice Travel Group, with whom he booked the vacation. Day faced a constant battle against pain and emotion, with doctors warning that he would walk with a limp for the rest of his life. The accident also left him unable to pursue his career as a window fitter. Day, who spent over 5,000 pounds on the holiday, accused First Choice of robbing him of his children's childhoods and criticized the company for their lack of support. An emerging video showed another near miss on the same slide, and five other tourists reportedly suffered injuries on the same attraction. Day's case drew attention to potential safety issues, with experts claiming that the slide violated local health and safety standards. First Choice expressed regret over Mr. Jarvis's injuries, stressing the rarity of such incidents and emphasizing their commitment to stringent quality standards and customer safety. 9. Caught by the Coyotes In Canada's first ever documented fatal attack, a pack of wild coyotes mauled a 19-year-old woman to death. In 2009, Taylor Mitchell, a rising country music singer, had the entire world at her feet when coyotes put an end to her life. The bright young vocalist had just released her debut CD to critical acclaim. Judges nominated her for the Young Performer of the Year at the Canadian Folk Music Awards. She was a nature lover who'd taken a rare day off from her tour to stroll around in the woods in Nova Scotia's Cape Breton Highlands National Park. The same afternoon, two coyotes approached an American couple in the vicinity. It startled the couple because it happened in the middle of the road. The duo took a picture of the pack. A few minutes later, the couple heard a young woman screaming amidst the eerie howls of coyotes. They followed the shrill cries of pain and three other hikers. They found Mitchell lying defenseless on the ground with a bloody coyote standing over her. It didn't budge when the gang tried to scare the coyote away. Instead, it growled and held its ground till the Royal Canadian Mounted Police arrived and fired a shotgun at it. Devastating bite marks covered Mitchell's head and limbs. Despite the severe blood loss, the woman tried to fight desperately for her life as a helicopter rushed her to the nearest hospital. Sadly, because of the profuse bleeding from several wounds, she died shortly after. What followed Mitchell's brutal death was a string of coyote attacks on humans. As a result, officials issued a warning and advised all visitors to stay clear of Stanley Park in Vancouver. According to evidence found at the site, the coyotes possibly mistook her for a deer. The beasts then dragged her around as she tried to get back to her car. All Mitchell had to defend herself against the killer coyotes was a penknife in her keys. And clearly, that wasn't enough. So, make sure you're better equipped than she was before heading out for a hike into the woods. 8. Honeymoon Down the Cliff A judge sentenced a 22-year-old newlywed to 30 years in jail for her heinous crime. She'd shoved her spouse off a scenic cliff in Montana. Jordan Lynn Graham, 22, claimed to have second thoughts before killing her husband only eight days after their wedding. Cody Johnson, 25, died after falling off the edge of a popular hiking trail in Glacier National Park on July 17, 2013. He died after falling 200 feet, 60 meters. Authorities discovered Johnson's body on July 11, 2013, with an eight-inch long gash on the forehead. Graham indicated that the location was on her husband's bucket list, even though she claimed she had no idea where he'd gone. According to the Missoulian, U.S. District Judge Donald Molloy stated that the Kalispell lady, who continually lied and changed her narrative about what happened, never apologized for the murder and showed no remorse. The federal judge who handed down the punishment, which contains no possibility of parole, stated, she was a normal human, at least at the moment. However, how would a normal human murder her eight-day husband? Graham and prosecutors reached an agreement days into her criminal case in December 2013. The young woman confessed to her crime in exchange for a three-decade sentence. After reading a statement in which prosecutors deemed the homicide premeditated, they recommended a sentence of 50 years to life in prison. Graham got cold feet and wanted a new trial, arguing the agreement was illusory and a hollow formality. Molloy refused her request to change the trial and upheld the conditions of the plea agreement. 
on March 27, 2013, he sentenced her to 30 years in prison. I have no explanations for why I didn't make different decisions, Graham told the court. Graham initially told detectives that her new husband had gone out hiking with a bunch of friends. She even wrote an email from her fictitious Tony, claiming Johnson would never return. Investigators quickly saw through her story and discovered she got cold feet shortly after the wedding. Graham finally gave up and told the investigators how she and Johnson fought while walking up the trail. She then shoved him much harder than she had expected. Investigators later found that Graham was very apprehensive and had several reservations concerning her participation in the marital act. 7. Safari Gone Wrong In April 2019, 35-year-old Kimberly Sue Endicott was on safari with an elderly Canadian husband and wife and their guide. Suddenly, four unidentified armed men in military uniforms attacked them at nightfall. According to authorities, they held the group at gunpoint before taking the keys to their safari vehicle. They left with Endicott and the guide. The guide was a Congolese national named Jean-Paul Marenge Rometso. Queen Elizabeth National Park in southwest Uganda is a famous tourist destination with luxury wilderness camps. Armed rangers occasionally accompany tourists visiting the area to protect them from poachers or wildlife. The kidnappers left the Canadian visitors, Martin and Barbell Jurius, behind. They notified the camp manager, who escorted them back to safety. The kidnappers used one of the victim's cell phones to demand a ransom of $500,000, which investigators believe was the motive of the kidnapping. Authorities commissioned a joint operation involving cops, the military, and wildlife officials to locate and rescue the abducted individuals. According to a company spokeswoman, the kidnapped tourist guide worked for Wild Frontiers Uganda, a group organizing safaris within the East African nation since 1996. After they paid the ransom, the kidnappers released Endicott and the guide unharmed four days later. Bashir Hangi, a spokesperson for the Uganda Wildlife Authority, said that the national park spans 760 square miles, 1,223 square kilometers, is home to over 95 mammals and 600 bird species, and is mostly safe. This incident should not deter tourists in any way. In an interview with ABC News, Hangi said, This is a one-off incident. It's an isolated incident. That's not something that happens daily, and it's not something we're known for. We call it an accident. It's tragic, regrettable, but it happened, said the narrator. 6. Trampled by the Beast In April 22, at Kaziranga National Park, a wild elephant mauled a Dutch visitor to death after he insisted on staying and taking pictures while his friends and guide fled from the charging animal. Robert William Goldback, 55, was trekking with a guide, an armed forest ranger, and eight others through Assam's Kaziranga's Panbari Reserve Forest, India. The dense jungle is a popular spot with bird watchers and home to the wild Makhana, young male elephant. We got going around 6.30 a.m., the overseas visitors were ecstatic to see a rare Asian paradise flycatcher. At around 9 p.m., we were startled to see a massive elephant only 33 feet, 10 meters away. I sensed trouble since it was glaring at us, said guide Abdur Rahman. Rahman claimed he alerted everyone to leave the area, but an ecstatic goldback remained to capture the moment. As I moved away with the others, the guard, Subash Senapati, remained with him, Rahman stated. When he was about 30 meters away, he heard gunshots. The elephant charged at them after some had fled, according to Senapati. I shot three rounds into the air, but it continued to charge towards us. I ran away, yelling at the tourists to run as well, he explained. Then I heard a noise, like an elephant slamming against trees, followed by screams. It was an instant death. When I returned, I discovered the tourist's lifeless body twisted between two trees in the creepers. A few days later, a wild elephant killed a 40-year-old tea garden worker, Mina Tengal, 12 miles, 20 kilometers away. Forest officials believe it was the same tusker. 5. Washed Away Flash floods killed another Dutch tourist in a famous cave in Malaysia's mountainous Mulu National Park on Borneo Island. The search for the guide who accompanied the tourist was underway. Local fire and rescue head Law Po Kiong identified Peters Hans Hovenkamp, 66, of the central Netherlands as the deceased. Officials flew the body to Miri for further investigation. He drowned in the caves as a result of flash floods. 
his body was discovered in a cave river and transferred to the public hospital in Miri for a post-mortem, news organization AFP reported. Four days later, a rescue operation involving 68 people led them to a newly discovered 246-foot, 75-meter passageway deep inside the cave. Rescuers found Robiazal Robin, the 20-year-old local tour guide, dead. In July 2019, Hovenkamp was on a tour of the famous Deer Cave, home to at least 3 million bats that produce stunning patterns in the sky as they leave at sunset. Eight more tourists from the same group, who nearly became victims, survived after fleeing to higher ground. Mulu Park, a World Heritage Site in Sarawak State's remote Borneo jungle, is known for its caves, cliffs, and gorges. It attracts thousands of visitors each year, particularly during the welcoming showers during the summer months. It was a freak catastrophe, Law said, referring to the unfortunate death. 4. Gone with the Wind 31-year-old Joel Thomason went missing on a solo trek in the Yosemite National Park on September 6, 2021. The United States Army Reservist was to return from his hike between Hetch Hetchy to Lake Eleanor on September 9, 2021. Instead, a park ranger spotted him near the steep section of O'Shaughnessy Dam on the first day of Thomason's hike, which investigators believe was the last time anyone saw him. After several months of search operations, authorities presumed Thomason had died on the ill-fated hike. His family organized a memorial service in Turlock on December 4, 2021, and started a GoFundMe page to help his wife and two-year-old son. Though it's improbable he's alive, explains the GoFundMe page. Without verifying his location, Joel is deemed a missing person. In California, getting a death certificate for a missing person can take up to five years, so his wife Amanda won't be able to collect on items like Joel's life insurance or social security to help bridge the gap. Thomason isn't the only one who vanished into thin air at the sprawling park. The following case is another of Yosemite National Park's several unsolved disappearances. 3. Lost and Never Found In August 2000, 49-year-old Ruth Ann Rupert left her home in Florida for Yosemite National Park. She was an accomplished climber who frequently ventured to great heights. One of her favorite stories was about how she ascended Mount Kilimanjaro with a freezing foot. Rupert traveled to Argentine Peak in Colorado to ring in the new year, while others worried about Y2K. For such a seasoned climber, the trek at Yosemite should have been a breeze. Rupert had intended to join a backpacking group that would go 19 miles, 30 kilometers across the park. Instead, she was upset when she woke with an eye infection, forcing her to miss the climb while she had to seek medical attention. Unhappy with the turn of events, she took things into her hands. She went shopping and bought a tent at Curry Village. Rupert seems to have vanished after that. She left her supplies behind at the tent, which is not something a seasoned hiker would ideally overlook. Her family's confident that she'd never abandoned them and that she had no intention of harming herself. Search teams never found Rupert despite a search and rescue mission. Finally, eight years later, someone discovered Rupert's backpack lodged in a drain in Fireplace Creek, about five miles, eight kilometers away from Curry Village, where she was last seen. How Rupert's backpack ended up there remains a mystery, just like her whereabouts. Two, into the canyon. Drake Kramer, a 21-year-old college student, was so passionate about nature and hiking that the skilled outdoorsman majored in geology at the University of Texas. But one particular visit to the Grand Canyon ended the man and his family's dreams. Sadly, a lovely evening with his parents at the movies on January 29th was the last day the family had with him. Speculations grew when Kramer's last message to his mother surfaced. It read, I need to be back with Mother Earth and set my soul free. So did Kramer hint at a suicide? To unravel this mystery, let's go deeper into what happened. Kramer flew to California and then to the Grand Canyon out of the blue with no preparation. On February 1st, 2015, he landed at the Bright Angel Lodge in Arizona. Although Kramer had been there several times before, he'd never traveled alone. Authorities reported he left his car at a lodge nearby and possibly made it on his own toward the south rim of the Grand Canyon. We agree that the topography of the south rim is quite mixed, making it difficult to navigate. However, it's improbable that nobody would discover any trace of him or his bones. Kramer's body has never been located. 
nor have there been any indications of what happened to him. His family remains optimistic and denies the possibility of suicide. One, from Mesa Verde to missing. When he disappeared, Mitchell Dale Sterling was 51 years old, six foot tall, 200 pounds with grayish brown hair. Sterling was last seen while trekking in the Mesa Verde National Park on June 9, 2013. He traveled with his wife, father, and mother on a road trip. Sterling began hiking at 4.30 p.m. after telling his parents that he wanted to view the spruce treehouse. The Petroglyph Point Trail leads to the dwelling, less than a quarter mile, 0.4 kilometers long. Stelling, however, never came back. Authorities discovered human remains in a secluded park region thanks to an anonymous tip. On September 17, 2020, U.S. Park Rangers, an ISB special agent, and Montezuma County Coroner's Office officials discovered and collected the remains. They found Sterling's body and several personal items around 4.2 miles, 6.7 kilometers from where he was last seen. At the end of the seven-year-long investigation, officials found no evidence of foul play. Would you rather go skydiving with a professional who knows exactly what they're doing and will keep you safe, or go down the world's tallest water slide by yourself after hearing some of these horror stories? Let us know in the comments down below. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.